The music here again has changed. Here they are compared. Dear Chairman, the meta is nothing more than an entity seeking to increase its power. Dear Chairman, the meta is nothing more than an entity seeking to increase its power. I was going to stop saying that it was changed because it's changed in almost every episode. But you know what? It's my show, damn it. I can do what I want. More than an entity seeking to increase its power. From my perspective, that seems to be a very common occurrence at the moment. What the director says here is probably some shade thrown at the chairman, since in the director's eyes, if the chairman were trying to take him down, it would increase his power. The chairman's power, I should say. You can see a little green shimmer on Seth's suit here. This is supposed to mimic the shine given off by Delta, but in the actual game, they're using an overcharged plasma pistol and someone standing very close by. I think I would be more useful in my current state. I'll dump my shield generator at the same time. Wasn't the shield generator given to North and not South? I could see her picking it up off his dead body in Recovery 1, but I thought the medic killed North and took all of his shit before she had a chance to do that. Otherwise, she would have taken Theta too, no? There's no way that thing can resist the both of you. You are... abandoning me? It's my best chance to get out of this. Technically, she is right, I would think. Sure, the meta would grow stronger, but his goal isn't to kill all the freelancers, it's to gain all the AI fragments. So, he would have no use going for South after he gets her equipment and AI. Three. Transfer to storage. Two. On my mark. One. No! There they are! Who threw this grenade? South's body doesn't make a throwing animation, and Wash and the Blues are clearly too far away to throw such a grenade. I mean, they aren't donut after all. New targets incoming. Friendly Don't targets. let him get near her! The first of many things that the Reds and Blues steal off of the several factions they're up against. In this case, Freelancer. They must have stolen these mongies off the Freelancer base before getting here, because Church says they walked to the base in the first place. Oh great. We couldn't have found that out on the radio? We had to walk here? Friendly Don't targets. let him get near her! Just fine couple. Yeah. No wonder why Church never drives. Come on! Hello! Hey! See that purple one? On our team. You should help her. Okay. Alarm! Friendly fire. Uh, she got in the way when I was trying to help her. Two things. One. One of the Red vs. Blue's iconic lines are said here. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Alarm. Two. Now look. I know Caboose team kills a lot, but does he team kill enough for Church to know exactly how this would play out? Look for a shimmer. It can turn invisible? What is this thing? It can bother you, never bother me. I feel happy and fine. Ha ha! Living in the sunlight, loving in the moonlight. It takes the equipment of other freelancers. It must have picked up cloaking from tech. Wait a second. Any equipment? Yes! Why? Shit! Wyoming! Cover me! Because Wyoming's helmet was on the ship, it had his equipment installed in it. That's how the meta has it. What? Wyoming? Kaboot, cover him. Grab those spike grenades. Conveniently placed spike grenades. Oh, don't let Caboose help me! There it is! Hey! Help out here! Church also says don't let Caboose help him, then immediately asks for help. Oh, don't let Caboose help me! Hey! Help out here! Beggars can't be choosers, homie. Toss that grenade! That was the worst throw ever. Of all time. Not my fault. Someone put a wall in my way. Ah yes, the classic scene, and according to the director's commentary, the line That was the worst throw ever. Of all time. Was ad-libbed by Shannon McCormick. I don't know what the original line was supposed to be, but it sure couldn't be that. Not my fault. Someone put a wall in my way. Caboose once again not taking responsibility for his actions. Just like in chapter 3. Once again, nobody's fault. Psst. I think the new guy did it. And in some of the episodes during the Blood Gulch Chronicles. Two. What the? Where did my body go? Oh, you've got to be kidding me! Tucker did it! This comes up later in the episode. Church was stationed here for 14 months by himself, so he's bound to have some hidden weapons and armor around the place just in case. That's how he knows exactly where the rocket launcher would be hiding. Okay, this scene has always fascinated me. It was done so fucking well. Like, I know how they did it, with theater mode and the camera not moving and yada yada yada. But look here, the meta moves behind the smoke trail. Like, for a show that was made inside a video game, this level of editing is huge. As someone who edits videos pretty regularly, I can tell you this must have taken hours upon hours to do. I think it's impressive as all. Well. 
Now I gotta be the guy to pick it apart. If you look closely, you can see Caboose is behind this tree in one frame, but in the next frame, he's actually jumping over the barrier. Also, this is one of the very few times we see someone other than Simmons hold a rocket launcher. The only other time I can think of is in season 14, but that's way down the line. Why didn't the meta take the shot? Is this supposed to show that Maine is in there somewhere resisting the AIs, or mainly Sigma's control? It's used Aiden Wyoming's stupid time thing from the ship! What's wrong with you? Why don't you tell us I can use equipment? Remember when I said back in episode 4 that this would be important? Washington tries to tell Church what the meta does after he kills a freelancer, gains new equipment, but Church interrupts him. This is important for later. So clearly, Washington did try to tell them what the meta could do but Church was too focused on text to listen, and interrupted Wash during his explanation. Why didn't you tell me that Wyoming was on the ship? And why didn't someone give me something to yell about? Mm. <sighs> I feel like a scene was cut here. It just seems like something was supposed to be here, but was cut out at the last minute. It's in both the episodic and the Blu-ray release, so nothing was changed here directly between the two episodes. It just seems off. Delta, are you here? Affirmative. I am undamaged. However, Agent South is seriously wounded. She was riddled with bullets. Wash barely survives three shots in the back, and that was with a healing unit. She got shot at least the same amount of times and still able to get up. I mean, she can't walk, right? But she can still get up. Basically, I'm surprised South got off easier than Wash when they got hit the same amount of times. And we all know Caboose don't miss. May I suggest moving me to a new host? Roger that. I don't trust her anyway. One of you two take him. Um... I don't think that I can. I'll do it. I like meeting new people. Look, I know Wash has some trust issues with AIs in his head, but he thinks Caboose is a better option than himself? Whack. This is probably where Caboose learned to move AIs into different bodies. The start of it, anyways. If you notice here, Caboose seems to take the AI implantation really well. No disorientation or anything that South had. This is because of his time in Blood Gulch and being infected by O'Malley. Delta, what happened? I agree with the simulation trooper. The meta has most likely acquired both a temporal distortion unit and an AI capable of running it. In this case, Gamma. Well, This implies that certain AI can only run certain equipment. Besides Epsilon in later seasons, the only other AI we have seen to run more than one piece of equipment is Delta, running the healing unit for York and the bubble shield for South. Why didn't it kill us then? I am sorry, but I do not have enough data to formulate an answer. I think we should simply be happy it is gone. That makes sense to me. I also agree with the glowing person. They use Caboose here to not draw suspicion to Church for saying, that makes sense to me, because it's not something he would normally say out of the blue. Heh, <laughs> get it, because he's on blue team? But they use this line here specifically to show that he is the alpha. Look, I know that was a spoiler, but I warned you about spoilers in the first episode. Much like she wounded you to escape in our previous encounter with it, and as I have learned in our travels, her brother North suffered a similar fate. Learning South got her own brother North killed was a shock to me, and probably a shock to a lot of people. This just puts South in a whole new light of how cruel she can be. That we do not allow her to hamper our progress. Okay. Oh, come on, Wash. What are you gonna do? Washington loads his pistol in this shot, but you can hear him load it again in the next shot. Okay. Oh, come on, Wash. My personal headcanon is that he was gonna shoot her sooner, but had a jam, so he had to clear his gun. Yes. Good suggestion. You're welcome. See, Delta claimed to use logic to determine South was still being a threat by being a damper on their progress and blah blah blah. It is highly probable that she will turn on us again soon. But that you're welcome? Man, that was personal. He was just salty that he was almost sacrificed so she could slip away again. <laughs> Which, I mean, I don't blame him, mind you. Just call it as it is. Look, I've been kind of minorly hyping up Caboose taking responsibility for his actions, and he finally does it in this episode, but they cut it out of the Blue Wave release. It's that post-credits dialogue thing they usually do at the end of like a lot of the episodes, but they cut it out of the blue every release because it didn't fit properly. This is what it was supposed to be. You guys are some cold motherfuckers. I just want everyone to know that I have no problems walking. And I take full responsibility for the grenade incident. He only does this because he's scared of Washington and doesn't want to die. Which is pretty reasonable. And that's really all I got for you for now. That's the end of chapter 6, so 
thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. You guys have shown major support in all the videos, and it's 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 just awesome to see. I'll stop thanking you guys eventually. I I, I know it's going to get annoying. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate all everything that you all do. If you liked it, feel free to leave a like, comment, anything that I missed, share it with a buddy of yours, and don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up to date on all the videos that I post in the future. If you guys want to check out the playlist of Overanalyzing Red vs. Blue, I have it on screen now. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you all later.